In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to show you a cooling technology that could completely transform how we think about air conditioning. We'll explore why magnetic cooling might be better than the system currently in your home, why it's taken 140 years to develop, and whether companies like Magnotherm might finally bring it to your house. You'll learn exactly how magnetocaloric cooling works, why it could be 30% more efficient than traditional systems, and the real reasons that it hasn't replaced your current AC yet. And by the end, you'll know if magnetic cooling is truly revolutionary or just another over hype technology that will never make it to market. Did you know magnetic cooling has been around since the 1880s but still isn't in your home? The technology was first discovered by Emil Warburg back in 1881 when he noticed certain materials would change temperature when they were exposed to magnetic fields. But despite being around for over 140 years, this technology has stayed mostly locked up in laboratories and specialized applications instead of making its way into our homes. So what's been happening with magnetic cooling all this time? Well, the early applications were nothing like what we've used in our homes today. Scientists in the early 20th century realized they could use this magnetic effect to achieve incredibly low temperatures. We're talking near absolute zero on the Kelvin scale. They developed a process called adiabatic demagnetization refrigeration, or ADR for short, and this was groundbreaking for scientific research, but these systems were designed for specialized lab work, not for cooling your living room or keeping your groceries fresh. In the 1950s, we saw some progress with magnetic refrigerators that could operate between one and 30 degrees Kelvin. That it's still extremely cold. We're talking about negative 453 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 405 degrees Fahrenheit. But these early systems had serious limitations. They were inefficient and could only run for a few days at a time, which is not exactly what you would want for your home refrigerator. But the real game changer came in 1976, and that's when engineers built a magnetic refrigerator that could actually operate around room temperature, spanning a range of 80 degrees Celsius. This prototype used rotating gadolinium linium plates in a powerful seven Tesla magnetic field. And this was the first time the technology showed the potential for everyday applications rather than just specialized lab equipment. And finally, after nearly 100 years, magnetic cooling had broken out of the ultra cold temperature range. The technology kept evolving in the mid 1990s with the development of something called the active magnetic regenerator or AMR. And this was a magnetic refrigerator based on applying and removing a magnetic field and regenerating a fluid in a warm in cool state. And around the same time, researchers discovered the giant magnetocaloric effect in certain materials, making magnetic refrigeration look even more promising for commercial as well as industrial use. And by the late 1990s, companies like Astronautics Corporation of America were working with Ames Laboratory to build working prototypes. Now, these early systems showed the potential of the technology, but they faced some serious challenges. Like most technology, when it first comes out, they were too big, too expensive, and not efficient enough for mass production. But they proved that magnetic cooling could work, but they weren't ready to replace your home AC or your refrigerator. They were just proof of concept machines, interesting for engineers and scientists, but not really practical. So if this technology has been around for so long and scientists have been improving it for decades, why hasn't it made it to your home yet? Well, that's the million dollar question. Despite over 140 years of research and development, magnetic refrigeration hasn't become mainstream. The technology has shown promise for efficiency and environmental benefits, but challenges related to cost, material availability, as well as performance have kept it from wider adoption. And to understand why magnetic cooling hasn't made it to your home, we need to get under the hood and see exactly how it actually works. What if the cooling system in your refrigerator could operate without any refrigerants at all, just metal and magnets silently doing the job while using less energy. Well, that's not science fiction. It's the promise of magnetic cooling technology because your current refrigerator and air conditioner rely on pretty old school technology. They compress and expand refrigerant through a series of components that make up a refrigeration circuit. And in layman's terms, when the refrigerant compresses, it heats up. And when it expands, it gets cold, absorbing heat from inside your fridge or inside your home. And this is what occurs inside the evaporator coil of your air conditioner, which sits on top of your furnace inside your mechanical room. It works, but there's a cost. These refrigerants are toxic, they break down over time, the compressors make noise, and the whole systems eventually break down. Magnetic cooling, however, flips this concept on its head because instead of moving heat using refrigerant, it uses solid materials, specifically ones that demonstrate what scientists call the magnetocaloric effect. And the star of the show is usually gadolinium, which is a silvery white metal with a very special property, and that is that its temperature changes when it's exposed to magnetic fields. And here's 
here's how it works. When gadolinium is placed in a magnetic field, something fascinating happens at the atomic level. All those tiny magnetic particles inside the metal suddenly align themselves with the field, kind of like a crowd all turning to face the same direction at once. And this alignment process actually releases heat. When you remove the magnetic field, those particles randomize again, absorbing heat from the surrounding area in the process, and this temperature swing is the key to magnetic cooling. The magic happens in what's called an active magnetic regenerator, or AMR for short. This is the heart of any magnetic cooling system. The AMR contains the magnetocaloric material, like gadolinium, positioned inside of a magnetic field that can be turned on and off, and at both ends of this component you'll find heat exchangers that help transfer heat where it needs to go. But the AMR isn't just a solid chunk of metal, it's actually porous, allowing heat transfer fluid to flow through it, and this fluid, typically water or a water antifreeze mixture, similar to glycol that is used in a hydronics application, is what's carrying the cooling effect where you want it. As the AMR undergoes cycles of magnetization and demagnetization, the fluid alternately absorbs and releases heat through convection. So let's walk through one cooling cycle. First, the magnetic field activates, causing the gadolinium to heat up. The heat transfer fluid carries this heat away to the hot side of the system. Then, when the magnetic field is removed, the gadolinium cools down, absorbing heat from the fluid. This chilled fluid can then pick up heat from whatever you're trying to cool, like the inside of a refrigerator, for example. And while gadolinium is the go-to material because it's Curie temperature, the point where it transitions from ferromagnetic to paramagnetic behavior, is around 20 degrees Celsius, which which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This is perfect for room temperature applications, but researchers aren't stopping there. Scientists are exploring various alloys like lophosci and ceramic perovskites to improve efficiency, expanding the operating and temperature range, and addressing cost issues. The Ames National Laboratory has found that lophosci can increase system power density, potentially making the systems more competitive. And one massive advantage of magnetic cooling systems is their environmental profile, because traditional refrigerants have a profile that is toxic to the environment and susceptible to contamination, while magnetic cooling systems use solid state materials with no refrigerants, and this aligns perfectly with what the International Energy Agency says we need. In addition to what consumers are looking for, which would ultimately be a lower maintenance product. In real world prototypes, like the one at the Ames Laboratory, the working fluid flows through AMR beds packed with gadolinium particles. As a rotating magnetic field causes the gadolinium to magnetize and demagnetize, the fluid temperature changes, creating a continuous cooling cycle. And the French-German startup Magnoric is developing refrigeration units that are now entering the pre-industrialization phase for larger units that are exceeding 6 kilowatts in capacity, showing that this technology is actually moving beyond the lab. And we'll talk about why this isn't already cooling your home shortly, but if you're enjoying this content so far, please hit the like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel. It's a free way you can show support and it is much appreciated. Now, magnetic cooling sounds amazing on paper, more efficient, fewer moving parts, and zero harmful refrigerants. But if it's so revolutionary, why isn't it cooling your home right now? Despite companies making real progress towards commercialization, several practical hurdles have prevented this technology from reaching your living room. And they might surprise you. Let's be real about what's standing between you and a magnetic cooling system. While the science is solid, the business reality is a little complicated. Cambridge, which is a company founded back in 2005, stands as the oldest player in this emerging industry. They've been focusing on something critical that others haven't, which is developing low-cost, scalable solutions with compact designs that can actually fit into existing appliance formats. And what makes them different is their approach to materials, because instead of relying on expensive gadolinium-based solutions like many competitors, they've developed what they call innovative third-generation alloys that make their technology more commercially viable. But here's the thing. Cost remains a massive hurdle. Those rare earth materials essential for magnetic cooling aren't just expensive, they're primarily sourced from China, which creates serious supply chain concerns concerns that directly impact whether this technology can ever become affordable for the average homeowner. Because it's not just about the initial research, it's about manufacturing at scale in a way that makes financial sense for both companies as well as consumers. And the size challenge hasn't disappeared either. You probably wouldn't want a refrigerator sized unit just to cool your bedroom. And while newer designs are significantly more compact than their bulky predecessors, the end game of fitting powerful magnetic cooling systems into spaces comparable to 
traditional AC units remains challenging. So for homeowners with limited mechanical room space, this is no small consideration. Then there's the issue of raw cooling power because generating sufficiently strong magnetic fields to cool an entire house isn't simple. It requires significant energy input and specialized equipment. And this directly impacts what engineers call power density, which is the thermal power in watts divided by the device mass in kilograms. In simpler terms, getting enough cooling power from a reasonably sized unit has been a persistent roadblock. And temperature range presents another unexpected challenge because your home AC needs to be able to perform across a wide range of temperatures, especially in places with seasonal extremes. And while magnetic cooling works beautifully near room temperature, achieving the wide temperature spans needed for real world HVAC applications has proven difficult. Researchers are actively working on this limitation, but it represents a significant hurdle at the moment. The good news is that companies are making tangible progress. For example, Magnoric isn't just focused on refrigeration, they're exploring ways to transform waste heat into electricity while developing cooling prototypes. And they recently showcased a magnetocaloric display cabinet at Chilventa, which demonstrated the technology's potential for larger applications like supermarkets as well as data centers. But here's where we need to set realistic expectations. The current commercial trajectory isn't aimed at your home AC system, at least not immediately. Companies like Magnotherm, Camfridge, and Magnoric are strategically starting smaller with beverage coolers and small chillers as their initial commercial products. This approach makes sense because starting with more manageable applications allows them to refine the technology before tackling the complexity of whole house systems. So what is the timeline looking like? Well, the industry is definitely transitioning from laboratory curiosities to actual commercial products that you can buy, but your magnetic home AC is still likely a few years away. The pioneers in this field are making deliberate strategic moves, solving problems one by one, rather than promising immediate revolutions. So we've traced the fascinating journey of magnetic cooling from its 19th century origins to today's emerging commercial products. And the truth is, this isn't just some hyped up tech fantasy. It's a legitimate cooling method with serious potential, but for homeowners making decisions right now, conventional high efficiency heat pumps, dual fuel systems, or a traditional forced air furnace remain your most practical options. They're readily available, proven solutions that offer significant improvements over older systems. Meanwhile, magnetic cooling will continue developing in the background and could become a viable option in the next five to 10 years. And if you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and watch this next video.